Today I'm going to show you how to make a simple sourdough focaccia. Top with rosemary, flaky salt, olive oil, cherry tomatoes, and olives. This one is a crowd pleaser. Hi, I'm Sune, and I'm a food geek. Today I'm going to show you how to make a sourdough focaccia. Unlike most other sourdough bread, this doesn't require a lot of skill, but it's still extremely delicious. The skill to deliciousness ratio is through the roof, so to speak. <laughs> if you're new to this channel, I bake a lot of sourdough bread and I make delicious food from all over the world. I'm on a quest to get the most out of every ingredient, and my goal is to teach you how to do that in simple and understandable steps. So join me by subscribing and ringing the bell so you won't miss any future videos. The focaccia that I'm making here is a focaccia al rosmarino, or simply rosemary focaccia. It's topped with fresh rosemary, flaky salt, and olive oil. I'll be adding cherry tomatoes and kalamata olives to mine, but feel free to add whatever toppings that you love. For the flower selection, I'm using 70% all-purpose flour and 30% bread flour. We're not going to need gluten development to keep this bread standing, so I prefer softer crumb and crust. Those were the words. This is the recipe. The written recipe, the ingredients, and the amounts are linked in the card above. To a bowl, add 528 grams of all-purpose flour, 226 grams of bread flour, 14 grams of salt. Mix with your hands to combine. Then add 443 grams of mature sourdough starter. Some people ask me what I mean by mature and it simply means that the starter has been fed and has grown to its peak and then it's used within 12 hours of its peak. Note that the longer it's been since it's peaked, the more sour the starter is. You can use this to your advantage when you want a really tangy bread. Then add 528 grams of water. We're reserving 50 grams of water, that way we may or may not mix it in later, depending on how the dough looks. First mix it together. When the dough comes together, start folding the dough in over itself while turning the bowl. When you're done mixing the dough, have a look at it. Mine doesn't look overly hydrated, so I decided to mix in the rest of the water, 50 grams. nice and supple already and the gluten's already developing nicely. The way that I see that the gluten is developing is that when I pull up the dough, the dough sticks together and becomes elastic. If you rewind, you can see how it looked when I first started mixing. It was more like an incohesive lump. Once the dough is looking great and quite developed, add 15 grams of olive oil and fold that in.
Cover it with a damp dish towel and let it hang out for 30 minutes to relax the gluten. You know that stressed gluten is tight. Then the bulk fermentation is starting and we'll do three sets of stretch and fold spaced out by 30 minutes. The first set of stretch and folds. The second set of stretch and folds. third set of stretch and folds. After the third set of stretch and folds, get a roasting pan. Mine has the interior measurements of 38 by 30 centimeters, about 15 times 12 inches. I'm linking the one that I'm using in the description. If you have a different pan you want to use, you can go to the recipe in the description. There's a calculator that'll let you scale the dough based on your pan's measurements. Yes, it works in both centimeters and inches. Oil the pan liberally with olive oil. Then add the dough. Flatten the dough and stretch it out as much as you can without any tearing. Put a wet towel over top and let the dough rest for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, we'll stretch the dough to the corners again. And then after having done that, we'll let it rest for another 30 minutes. Then stretch the dough out towards the corners again. If it doesn't quite go all the way, it'll be fine. The dough will move itself as it's uh, fermenting. Then let the dough ferment until it's light and puffy and visibly fermented. When there's about 30 minutes left, you should preheat your oven to 230 degrees Celsius, about 450 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm using Fan Assist. In my case, the fermentation took about two hours, but yours can be longer or shorter depending on the temperature and the strength of your starter. When the dough's ready, gather your toppings, grab the pan with the dough and uncover it. Wet both your hands and dimple the dough using your fingers. You should press hard all the way through the dough. Then splash a couple of tablespoons of olive oil on top. And it's time to put all your toppings on. Make sure you push those bigger things into the dough.
Once your focaccia is properly topped, it's time to bake it. Put it in the oven for about 30 minutes. If your oven heats unevenly, turn the pan around at about the 15 minute mark. At the end of the bake, keep an eye on the bread. If it's getting too dark, grab it before the 30 minutes. Also, if it's still a bit anemic at the 30 minute mark, give it a bit longer. Here it comes out of the oven. It smells wonderful and listen to it sing to us. It's also gorgeous. Wanna see? Wow, any dinner table would be happy to have a bread like that. Slice it with a knife or put the whole thing on the table and let people tear off a piece. It's not about fine dining. I hope you learned something today. See you next time. Mm -hmm.